What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. All right, man. Well, here we go. We're at number two. <laughs> um, yeah. I think you're probably one of the highest on this guy. And I, I think I see what you see in being there's, I think there's a lot of upside with this guy. This guy's feet are so quick and they're so, um, so tell me, tell me what you think about well, you Jalen Rager. Why don't y'all pop it off? Why don't y'all, what, what is it? Why is Rager fifth for you, Jay? And why, I don't, where, where, why don't y'all tell me what you don't like about it's, Rager? So it's basically, like you said, so we have all these guys. It's when I'm splitting hairs here, it feels like most of these guys above them feel a little bit safer to me, but the upside for Rager is through the roof. Like I'm, I want to put Rager on my team because I think there's, there's so much juice there. Um, but I think I would – I feel a little bit more confident taking most of these guys ahead of them because I feel like they're just a little bit safer prospects. Is that fair? Like, I mean, when I look at him, he, he might be the most subtle, sudden dude in this – when you watch him move around on the field. Like, the suddenness of, of Rager is ridiculous. Like I said, I think his feet are really quick and they're really smooth. He has ridiculous circus catches followed by some kind of stupid drops, but – whatever he had, he struggled with like he came in there I, was it kj hill his freshman year is that who was his quarterback kenny trill kenny trill kenny, kenny hill yeah. yeah came in there and had a ridiculous a ridiculously efficient freshman year and absolutely lit it up and then just played with a bunch of different trash can like he was okay the next year and this year like they chart when you chart all of his stuff and and you see the numbers that come back and he has all these low percentages of things. It's like, well, they did a terrible job of scheming him with short stuff, which should have been all day long because he's ridiculous. If you can get the ball in his hands. And then half the time, like after he catches, he's having to come back to balls or wait on balls. Or it's just like, there's a lot of things that aren't, weren't really in his control uh, this last year from just basically having a trash can for a quarterback. Um, so I, I really, I see a lot of upside there, but I'm, I'm a little concerned about, uh, the floor, like it might, I, I could see him busting is basically the, like, and I feel a little bit better about these other guys is really what holds me back from keeping them up any higher. Yeah. And I think that's, I think that's a fair assessment of, of Rager, um, you know, but looking at it you know, on the opposite end of the spectrum, I think he's the most dynamic wide receiver in this class. I think what he can do, he and CeeDee Lamb, who's number one for me, no surprise, uh, if if there's no training camp, if let, let, screw all that, all things equal, if all of these guys have to learn how to adjust to defensive backs at the NFL, they have to learn how to win with separation. If all of them have kind of that equal playing field, right, that adjustment level, the one thing that Rager can do that everybody in this class outside of CeeDee Lamb really has never shown an ability to do, and that's contribute on special teams, and in particular the punt return game, and it's a big – that's big for me because returning punts is the single hardest play in football, period. There's no harder position to play outside a punt returner. And when you look at the career of Tyreek Hill, and I'm not comparing Jalen Rager to Tyreek Hill. I've got a different comp for Rager. What kind of sparked Tyreek's Hill uh, Tyreek Hill's ascension at the NFL? It was punt returns. I mean, he was returning. It felt like he was returning a kick or a punt every week. And then all of a sudden, he started to get integrated into Kansas City's offense little by little. Rager was not only a dynamic return man, he carried the ball out of the backfield. I think outside of T. Higgins, he's the best 50-50 ball receiver in this class, and he's only five foot eleven. It's ridiculous what he can do with the ball in the air. It's it's insane. And he went to the combine and he, I mean, he jumped 42 inches in the vertical jump. Um, you know, it's, it's funny that a f when we look at a four, four, seven and think that's somehow slow, I right. think part of that was my hype. I, I hyped him up a little too much and people probably thought that he was going to run. And I even thought that he was going to challenge rugs as the fastest receiver And his whole combine is like an interesting paradox because he runs a four four seven, jumps forty two inches, and has almost the furthest broad jump in out of anybody at the combine. But then his lateral agility drills were 
fucking one percentile, right? Just like dog shit. Yeah, why even run the three cone and the twenty yard shuttle if you're Rager? You know why even? Like he has to know that we talk about that a lot. Like there's no way that he didn't do that beforehand, right? He has to know that they weren't coming back. Like why not? Just why? Why not do it? Like why just be like, hey, we're but not doing that. The thing with that is. I think, and there were some people who charted those lat, those three cones and 20 yard shuttles. Like historically, they said this was like one of the slowest times for any position in those lateral agility drills in the past like 20 years. For the years. receivers, you mean? Yes. For the yeah, receivers. there was a lot of bad times. Yeah. And is that because they were doing it at 10 o'clock at night? I don't know, because Denzel Mims ran a 6.66, so I'm then <laughs> Michael Pittman was sub seven. But right. I, I, I think Rager's dynamic ability. He just fits today's NFL where a lot of things are manufactured for the wide receiver. Tunnel screens, he's money. Jet sweeps, money. Throw it downfield, money. Double moves, money. I, I mean, is there some risk? But the problem is that, that, that what I counter is he's going to get day one draft capital. He's, he's getting drafted on Thursday. Mark my word. So when you're t- looking at these wide receivers – the only four out of these six that I'm pretty confident are going to go drafted in the first round are four through one. And draft capital matters. Like, I, I care more about draft capital than landing spot. A.J. Brown taught me a very valuable lesson last year that I don't even care about landing spot anymore, uh, especially for wide receivers. So, uh, with the perceived draft capital, with his athleticism, with the dynamism that he possesses, I feel really, really good with having the upside of Jalen Rager, which I think is – I, I, I've comped him to a more explosive version of Percy Harvin. and I've had that comp for him for over a year and a half, and that's who I see his game as. Like that's that's what I see. So last uh, one one quick uh, thing last year, like Hollywood Brown gets drafted high. I don't know where you had him. Let's say like a guy like KJ Hamler gets drafted in the first round for some reason because he's really fast. Does that change your opinion on him? It ain't happening. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm not even, I'm not even going to, (laughs) I'm not even going to entertain it because it's not happening. It's not happening. But for the purpose of the exercise, if a KJ Hamler goes in the first round, I'm still not touching him. (laughs) All right. All right. Well, Jay Wayne, what's your thoughts on Rager or or how you feeling over there? Yeah. I mean, there's a lot to get excited about with Rager. I I can't, I can't deny that. I mean, he's, Uh, He's definitely looks super. He looks faster than his forty. I didn't do the research. I'm assuming he wasn't a track star, so maybe that. And 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 I don't think you're like incorrect, Ray, with assuming he was going to run a super fast forty just from looking at the tape on the one hand. And then also they were talking about how he was charted at a, at a four two nine coming into college or something like that. And everybody was saying he was the fastest player in the Big Twelve. And um, so I mean. He, he made a mistake putting on 11 pounds. Like, I just, I don't know why he did that. Um, maybe, I don't, I don't know why, but they list him at 195. He checks in at 206. I don't think that was wise. And you see he's already dropped weight. He's back down to 195, I think, at his, or 198 at his virtual pro day, which I'm not even concerned about. But, you know, and, and, and one of the things that I didn't mention is he had the lowest catchable target rate in college football. Um, he played with six different quarterbacks in three years. It's it just TCU was just it was bad. Like it was bad. There were three games in 2019 where he wasn't targeted, targeted into the third quarter. And I think there were two games where a wide receiver, any wide receiver on the Horn Frogs offense, they didn't catch a pass until the five minute mark in the second quarter. I mean, it's just and even then. Even with that happening, his age-adjusted production, he still had the highest market share of receptions. Yeah, uh, his breakout age, 18 years old. Market share of receptions in 2019, over 25%. I mean, he still was the guy on a shit team, but he was still the guy. Right. He certainly – Got to love that college dominator. And, and, and real quick, Case, I, I, I don't want to discount him at all for any kind of lack of production. Like, I was a little stunned to see the yards after the catch that he put down, but then it's like he wasn't given that much of an opportunity to get the yak. So, I mean, and you can see how much yak he can get on a punt return. So, I, I'm with you there. It's just the, the minute I was starting to get real excited about Rager, I would see a terrible drop. And it was usually like over the middle. And then, and then I'd be like, okay, I can, I can get, I can get down with some drops. Everybody drops a ball, you know, maybe he's frustrated. It's bad quarterback play. And then, then, 
they ever seem like he kind of loses his balance a lot? Like he, he the turf monster yeah. seems to get yeah, him. He's got to get some new cleats. Yeah. He's got to <laughs> get some new cleats. He's got to get some new, he's got to get some new cleats because there were some plays where he's just slipping. Um, and, and that could be, that could be problematic and, and, and talks and, and yield to something else. But when you talk about dog, I mean, I don't know if you guys know his father was a second round pick, uh, won a Super Bowl. Um, is he a defensive so this, tackle or something? He, so he was yeah, a he played D-tackle. Yeah, yeah, Monte Rager uh, yeah. played defensive tackle, won a Super Bowl with the Colts. I mean, this dude is a dog, man. Uh, he's just – he's he's a raw player, right? He's far from a finished product. Like, Jerry Judy, way more refined than probably NFL ready. But I think Rager's going to be one of those guys where – look at DK this year, and they're already talking about, okay, we're going to open it up more for him this year. He may only run three routes year That's one. That's what I said earlier be. when you were talking about yeah. how much does the route tree matter. I said DK. Like, I mean, yeah. everyone just shat all over him because he couldn't do this or that. Like, Rager Mund- good luck may only run him. three routes, but when he gets the ball, good luck getting him down and good luck catching him because he's right. a beast. Yeah, and I think basically the, the moral of the story is is like we let it off with – you could really chop this up. Like, I'm okay with putting Rager really almost just about anywhere. He just, right now, today, the where he falls, it's more like fifth for me. I could easily have him over Higgins. I don't think I would put him over Judy or Jefferson just because I feel really safe about those two guys. Um, but I could he could easily be four instead of five or six. You know what I mean? Yeah.